In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Zoom for online teaching and how you can get the pro version for free. Hi there, David Walsh here from davidwalshonline.com, your place to connect and grow with video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use Zoom for teaching online, and I'll show you how you can get the pro version for free. So let's jump in. So here we are on Zoom's website, link is in the description below. Now to sign up for any version of Zoom, whether it's free or paid, you go to the sign up, it's free button over here. Now we'll go through and show you how you can get your free version in a bit. So to sign up, click on sign up, it's free. You need to pop in your date of birth, just picking any one here for now. And then you sign up either with a private email address or with Google or Facebook. So if you have a business address or a Hotmail or Yahoo email address, you can sign up there or sign up through Google or Facebook. So once you're logged in, we're gonna quickly go over some settings here to help you with your classes. So some automated settings here. If you want to switch on your video, so your video comes on automatically when your class starts, you can switch that on there. You can allow your students to join with their video on as well or not, probably not. The audio type you can allow is both telephone and computer or telephone and computer only. So there is the option for your students to dial in with their phone if they don't have good internet access where they are. Now Zoom are experiencing issues with telephone dial-in, so that may be turned off whenever you need to use it, so computer is probably still the best option to use. You can allow your students to join before you arrive if you want, or leave that off. Other good options here are only allow authenticated users to join from a web client, and also to require a password when scheduling your meetings. This will help make sure that it's only your students that are in the class. To make it easy for them, you can allow the embed of the password in the link so that they click on the link and the password is included in the link itself so they don't need to put it in. And if you are allowing users to come in by phone, then you can switch on the requirement for them to have the password as well. A good option to have is to make sure that your participants or students are muted so that there's no loud noises when everybody arrives. And if you want Zoom to remind you about upcoming classes, you can switch on that setting here. Now, if we go over to recording, you have the option for your students to record locally. You may wanna switch that off. You can switch on automatic recording so that it creates a file to your computer every time you have a class. So that can be a good one. You can still switch that on during the class as well. But if you have a tendency not to remember to switch it on, this is a good option to switch that on here. Now, if you're required by law to show a disclaimer that you are recording, you can switch that on there too. If you are taking the phone option, you can show international numbers if you have international students. And for privacy, if you want to hide the phone number from the list, you can do so there. So to quickly host a class, go up to the top right and then click on host meeting. And your options here are host meeting with video off, host meeting with video on or screen share only. So we're gonna start video off. Now, if you haven't got the client installed on your computer, it will just show this page and then you can select download and run Zoom. So you just download the desktop app, install it on your computer and then it will run. So I've got the app installed and the first thing it's asking me here is, do I want to join with my computer audio? Now, if I wanna test my audio for the first time, I can click on that. So it's asking me, did I hear the ringtone? Click on yes. Uh, there, it hears me there, and then I'm done. So this is Zoom. So if I want to uh, use another microphone input, I can do so. I can click on audio settings, and then I can select my audio there. To start my video, I click on start video. So you see me there now, and that is me on the screen. So my video options here are I can select different cameras. So this is my webcam right there. I do have other cameras. So if you're going up to a whiteboard or external board that's not in front of your laptop, then you can use different cameras on there. 
So I just plugged in a different camera. So if I switch that on now, so you'll see I've got a different camera there. So I could have that pointing at my whiteboard. And then when I come back to my computer, then I can switch back to my other camera here so I can take questions or anything like that. So you can have an external webcam on a tripod focused on a whiteboard if you're doing that type of teaching. So to invite people, simply click on invite. So you have your options here. You've got default email, Gmail, Yahoo. You can also copy the URL and send that out via WhatsApp or whatever, or copy the invitation and do the same thing. So under manage participants, this is very helpful indeed. So this pops up another window if you're in full screen like I am now. So this gives you the ability to mute all. So you can mute all your students when they come on. You can unmute all if you wanna hear answers or stuff like that to a question. Under more, you can also have the ability to mute participants on entry. So we had that set up on the settings on our Zoom itself, but we can also have it included in the app as well. You can allow them to unmute themselves or not, as the case may be. And as we saw in the settings, you can have it that it plays a sound whenever somebody comes or leaves. And allowing them to rename themselves can be helpful too. You can also lock the meeting as well. So that is the manage participants. Share screen, so you can uh, share your screen. So, so this brings up the windows you have on your computer. So I can show my Chrome browser here. If I double click on that. So it's showing my Chrome browser here now. If I stop share, go back again. Or I can show any other window that I have on my desktop. I can also show the full desktop here as well. If I have a phone that I've connected to my laptop, I can use that here, or I can use uh, an iPad or anything else that I want via AirPlay here. Another nice feature is the whiteboard. So you can have, uh, you can show stuff here. So you can make nice faces like that, obviously. And you can also allow people to collaborate with you on the whiteboard as well. So they can join in and they can start writing stuff here or pointing out that he needs a bigger mouth or whatever. Uh, and some teeth, obviously. So you can collaborate on the whiteboard as well. And then you can stop share as well. So under your settings here, so you can allow multiple participants can share simultaneously so that people can start sharing their screens or you can just have one participant. So it might be just you. Under chat, I'll pop that open. So we've got a chat screen. So under chat, your options here are, so just type in something here. So we can see that there. So you have a number of options here. So the options for the chat are, Participants can chat with one person, host only, uh, everyone publicly or everyone publicly and privately. So that's what it's setting right now. So if there was other people on here, then I would have an option under here to send a message to that person. So it's like notes in school and that you can send notes to people. It will save a text file to your computer once this is done so you can see everything that was being sent and you can send reactions too. So if you want to applaud somebody, you can do that there. Or if you want to thumbs up, you can do that also. Now this is the free version and I'm going to go into the paid version now to see what you get when you sign up to the paid option. So here we are in the paid version or pro version. So we have the option to record the call here. So with the paid version, I can record to the cloud. With the free version, you only really get to uh, record to your computer, which is still isn't bad. So with the uh, computer version, it saves a file to your desktop and then also saves the text file with the chat options too. With the paid option two, we've got polling, which is a new update on here. And there are a lot more other settings in the paid version when you sign up for that. Now, one thing that's inside the pro version is the virtual background. So I can select a background there or like this, or like I'm in San Francisco, something like that, or the Bahamas. So you can see I'm uh, not self-isolating. I am actually on a beach in the Bahamas, not where I should be, or back to none. 
Also as well, if you do happen to have a green screen, uh, you have that option here. So if you are using the green screen, it will select that option there too. And then once you're finished your meeting, click on end meeting, and this is in the free or the paid, click on that and then you can either leave the meeting yourself and your students can stay in the meeting or you can end the meeting for all. So click on that. So if you are a teacher and you want access to the paid version for free, look for this here. So the guy with the laptop, you wanna to go to request offer. So you can see here that it's lifting the 40 minute limit to free accounts for schools affected by the coronavirus. So it says sign up with your school's email address, then send through the form and then they will verify your account. Once you have been verified, they will have access to the full pro version for free. The form to fill out is below on this page. And if you want more information, then click on this FAQ on Zoom's program for K-12 schools. Uh, that will give you a list of information about it. Then they also have a blog post on what countries are eligible. So you can see if your country is on that list, and if you are, just go ahead, fill out the form and then get your pro version for free. So what classes are you teaching? Let me know in the comments area below. I'd love to know what you're teaching and who you're teaching it to. And if you've got a question about this or anything else to do with Zoom, pop that in the comments area below as well. Now, if you are new here, we upload videos every Tuesday and Thursday to help you grow your YouTube channel and also use video to grow your business. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell when we upload videos. And also as well, make sure to watch more of these videos here to help you with Zoom.